The choices we make are almost always driven by economics. So if we're looking at biofuels, just like many other energy topics, what we need to figure out is how much does it cost? Is it cheaper or more expensive to use fuel from biomass, biocorn, bio-soybeans, sugar cane? Or is it cheaper to use it from crude oil out of the ground? Today we're going to talk about the economics of biofuels. Now, economics is important. Generally, people will buy the cheapest thing if they do the same thing. After all, people uh, are motivated by economic self-interest. So, does it make sense to make corn into ethanol to use as gasoline? The only way to find out is to do the numbers. As of the day that we're shooting this film, corn costs $3.52 per bushel. The bushel is an archaic unit, but that's what they use in the U.S. And it equals eight dry gallons. All right, it's 56 pounds, 25.4 kilograms. From that one bushel of corn, from that 25 kilograms of corn, you can make 2.7 gallons of 100% pure ethanol. Let's do it per gallon. Everyone in at least the United States buys gasoline per gallon. Well, you translate to liter. Corn. Take that 352 a bushel, divide by 2.7. That's $1.30. Now, when you distill, you have to boil off the water. When you boil the water, it takes some energy. The energy cost is 40 cents. You also need something to boil it in. You need the plant. You have to build a factory. We're not doing this in the one-off still back in the corner or the guy making beer. What we're doing is a large modern plant. And the large modern plant needs capital. Of course, no one ever just plunks down 50 million, 100 million dollars. What you do is you go to a bank and you borrow it. So you can look at the cost of capital by looking at the cost of interest. How much do you have to pay per year to service your debt to build your factory? That cost of capital, the actual plant that you're making it in, is 25 cents. Got to have people. Someone's got to actually run the stills. It's 20 cents. And since you can't get that last bit of water out of alcohol by distilling it, and you've got some yeast, and you've got other stuff, you've got some other chemicals and additives, and that's another dime. Well, this is adding up. The good thing about using biofuels to make stuff like alcohol is what's left over, you can still sell. Pigs love dried distiller's grain, DDG. You got to dry it, it's part of the energy cost, but it still has food value. So you can sell that. DDG minus 43. Add all this up, this is $1.82. When I was driving into work this morning, I looked at the price of gasoline at the pump. $3.59. This looks awesome. But we're not really there yet. First, you have to realize the companies do this because, of course, they want to make some money. So if I actually look in the uh, commodities boards and I say, what is the cost right now? If I want in massive quantities to go buy a gallon of ethanol, it's not $1.82. It's two dollars and three cents. This is the sale, the wholesale price. So there's 21 cents profit. Reasonable profit. 
won't begrudge someone 10%. $2.03, still so much better than gasoline. The energy content of ethanol is only 70% of the energy content of gasoline. So, if I take my $2.03 and I divide by 0 0.70, this is $2.90. And you might say, oh, hey, that's still good, that's still less than $3.59, but this is the wholesale price. The wholesale price for gasoline, not what you and I pay, but what they pay at the refinery end, today was $2.54. So you look at this per energy content and you say, well, that's dumb. Why would anyone make anything out of ethanol? Three reasons. The first is that you don't use it at the full value of energy. If you do E85, you're right, you only get 70% of the value. But if you put it in small mix, like 10%, the regular gasohol mix in the US, or 15%, then what you have is something that actually boosts the power in your fuel so that the energy difference is not as marked. But the real incentive for doing this is taxes. This is a lecture about economics. So you realize that the only way governments can actually affect policy is by adding a tax, giving a credit, putting a tariff on things, and not coming at gunpoint and saying, you have to buy this, right? Government policy is done through economic means. There is an excise tax on gasoline of 18 cents, federal excise tax. If you blend some ethanol into it, even 10%, you don't pay the excise tax. Then, since you only have to buy 10% of it at this, if I do 10%, the typical gasohol blend, times 290, plus, of course, the other 90% times my wholesale figure, right? And I compare that to 100% of gasoline, the 254, plus the 18.4 cents excise tax, that's cents, right? This is 258. This is 272. Gas a wins. That's the economic reason. It's another reason that has to do with the environment. Gasoline, when burned at 100% level, with no additives, produces quite a bit of carbon monoxide. Especially in cities, carbon monoxide levels is not healthy for the population. So there are oxygenators, things that have extra oxygen that are put in. So the CO becomes CO2, normal end product of combustion. For many years, the additive of choice was MTBE, methyl terbuthyl ether. Wonderful chemical, except very deadly to consume directly. And when people noticed it was in some water supplies, not, 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 no more MTBE. Let's just give them alcohol. Who cares if that's in the water supply, right? So ethanol became the oxygenator of choice, and especially in big cities. They almost have to put ethanol in their fuel, otherwise their air pollution will be too high. The third reason comes back to supply and demand. Right now, oil prices are $92 a barrel when this was filmed. A year or two ago, $140 a barrel. So if you have this mix that I can go to some alcohol-based fuel, I can go to some gasoline-based fuel, then when prices go out of whack, you still have partial supply in the other camp. This makes some interesting facts, though. Since you can go between gasoline or alcohol and increase the amount that's used, the prices are actually linked. Remember, we only make 10% of our gasoline from corn, even though we use 40% almost of our corn crop. 
So, if we look back in history at this graph, which shows the price of corn, the price of oil, and the price of food, you can see very definitive similarities, especially through giant peaks. Oil goes up, corn goes up, and the whole other use of corn, the primary use, which is to feed animals, and therefore we eat the animals, the general cost of food also goes up. There are some exceptions, of course. You can have really good corn years. You can have really big droughts. You can have cases where oil supply is a little hinky because you're worried about war. But the general trend of food and oil, because we use food to make energy, are linked. What about soybeans? While 40% of our corn crop is used to make fuel, so only really about 4% of our soybeans go into it. However, that number can rise. And it again is a, a way to substitute depending on what prices are higher. So what are the numbers for biodiesel? For the actual feedstock, it doesn't have to be soybean oil. That's the example I'm using. And I'm already going to subtract out here what you sell in the end. So the net feedstock to make a gallon of diesel fuel is $1.80. Building a giant factory is about the same, whether you're doing it for ethanol or you're doing it for soybeans. That's still 25 cents. You've got to still pay people. It's about the same amount of work. That's still 20 cents. It turns out it takes more um, chemicals. You actually use up methanol and alcohol actually in this process. So that's 20 cents. And since basically soybeans are more expensive, they have protein in them, than corn is, this number comes out higher. This number comes out to be $2.45. Once again, there might be some amount of profit, right? Depends on comparison prices because wholesale diesel fuel is right now 280. The tax break is still there. The best mix to make sure all your vehicles can run, to not be too lean, not to be too dirty, is B20, 20% biodiesel, 80% regular diesel fuel. If you mix at least 10% of the biodiesel fuel in, you get the advantage of not paying the federal excise tax. And for diesel fuel, that's a difference of 24.4 cents. Depending on the price of oil, depending on the price of soybeans, once again, this can go either way. And that brings me to the last point. Even though sometimes this is a marginal economic decision, and when gasoline and oil prices go lower, it actually makes little sense, what it does make sense to do is it's a great farm program. I remember many years ago, 70s, farmers were paid not to plant. We have the best dirt, the best fields, the best places to make corn and soybeans of anywhere in the world. No irrigation needed, plenty of sunshine, plenty of land. And farmers were said, no, don't plant, you're making too much food. We can't give it away, we can't get it to starving people in other places. We want to, but we just don't have the transportation system to get it to them. Don't plant, you're driving the prices too low. We will pay you a minimum price. Plow it under. That made no sense at all. Instead of paying farmers not to plant, well, we can use it to substitute as part of the oil supply that we need to import into the country. It's not going to substitute for it. This is something that makes on the order of 5, 10% of our fuel. But it's something that will be done domestically and is renewable. The examples I've given you of soybeans and corn, of course, are very uh, um, specific to this area, the University of Illinois, parked in the middle of corn and soybean fields. But there are other feedstocks. 
The feedstocks for biodiesel can be waste oil. Not a lot of things from McDonald Fryers, but you can use it for this. The feedstocks to make ethanol can be from sugarcane. Brazil is a great case in point. Very large sugarcane crops and an entire automobile fleet that is flex fuel vehicles. I was driving across Brazil with some friends and he would figure out should he buy the E100, the ethanol fuel, or the gasoline at a given gas station? And you'd look at the prices. And you have to do some quick math, because remember, it's only 70% of the energy. You're only going to get 70% of your same miles before you have to fill up. So you looked at the price. If you were in the interior of the country and you did the math, it always made sense to use the sugarcane based fuel. That's where the factories were. When you got to the coasts where the refineries were, where the oil came in, or the oil offshore oil came in, by gosh, the regular gasoline was cheaper. It was a wonderful example of how economics can dictate fuel use and fuel choice.